A few years ago, somebody sent us, from the States in fact, from Iowa, they sent us a photograph of a cloud that looked a little bit like this. All right? It looks like a kind of very turbulent sea, very, very rough turbulent sea, maybe as if you're looking up from below. And when people send them into the Cloud Appreciation Society, we put them up on the gallery, and we kind of nerdily decide what type of cloud it is and categorize it, as you do. And uh, I wasn't quite sure what to call these clouds, because there is a name for wavy clouds, undulatus, wave clouds. But these seemed like undulatus turned up to 11, all right? They weren't your normal undulatus cloud. Now, we then got one sent in, another, uh, another one gets sent in about a year later. In fact, Every once in a while, they would appear. And each time I'd go, there is another of those sort of weird, nameless clouds. Until one day, I thought, wait a second, maybe if they don't have a name, maybe these clouds need a name. Maybe these clouds sent in from our network from all around the world should have a classification of their own. And I thought, how do you go about that? Well, you've got to come up with a Latin name, haven't you? And I thought, well, I called up my cousin, Philip. He's a Latin teacher. I said, Philip, what's a good Latin name that I could use for, uh, you know, that they use for when the sea is rough or turbulent? And Philip said, Glacialis, Hiemps, Aquilonibus, Aspirat Andas. <laughs> I said, it's a bit long. He said, no, 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 that, is a tran that translates, the, the, that's a quotation by Virgil, the, the Roman poet, and it means the waves were roughened by the icy winter's northern gales. And the word you want in there is aspirat, the verb aspero, it means rough, to be roughened. So aspiratus would be the term you'd use for that, roughened. So I think, great, aspiratus, that's what I'm calling it. Uh, but how do you go about making a cloud official? You know, a cloud classification official. And I know you've all asked yourself that question <laughs> at one time or another. Well, I took it to the Royal Meteorological Society in the UK, and I said, you know, what about this? It's a new cloud type. And they looked at it, and they said, well, yeah, it's distinctive. Yeah, you might have a case, but you need to find out more about it. So I took it to the University of Reading, and they said, uh, they looked into it, looked into the way the cloud forms, stuff like that. They said, you may have a case for this being a new classification, but it didn't matter what either of those lots said, because the only people who matter when it comes to the official classification of clouds are the World Meteorological Organization. UN organization based in Geneva, they published the International Cloud Atlas, all right, which is no page turner, <laughs> but it is the final word in cloud classification. So if you want your cloud to be official, it's got to get into the International Cloud Atlas. All right, the only problem is, well, it's been first published in 1896, and they've had public, you know, versions of it every, you know, every now and then since then. But the problem is that the, the UN don't do anything in a hurry, as we all know, and they had no plans to do a new edition of the International Cloud Atlas. They only just done one in 1974. <laughs> so, so I wasn't holding my breath. But then I was very pleased to hear just last week that. Um, Perhaps as a result of being hounded by uh, journalists who kind of got like this story, you know, weird guy wants to name a cloud, viral story, uh, they're hounded by them. They have decided they are going to do a new edition of the International Cloud Atlas. They're going to put, <laughs> they're going to put it. Uh, they got their experts to look into whether should, there should be any changes or additions to it, and they have concluded uh, that they think Aspiratus should be a new official classification, the first new cloud type since 1951. <laughs>